Welcome to BC Strategies webinar. I'm Jim Burton. And as most of you probably know, our objective at BC Strategies is to provide information to help people make informed buying decisions. And that's what this podcast or this webinar is all about. It's about the evolution of work, what organizations should focus on in the next three, six, and 12 months. As I'm sure many of you, um, are working from home. We're all working from home. You probably recognize my office here. Uh, this isn't my office. I'm in a room in the house that I'd be almost embarrassed to have you see the clutter behind me. So I'm taking advantage of one of Microsoft Teams uh, features and putting a background that makes it look like I'm in a sophisticated office or home. So today we're going to be talking, as I mentioned before, about the evolution of work. And I have been asked a uh, couple con colleagues of mine to join me, and I'll let them introduce themselves. We're going to start off with Kevin Keeler. Kevin, a little introduction, please. Well, thanks, Jim. Yes, I'm Kevin Keeler and uh, part of the BC Strategies team, and I work with uh, mostly large enterprises to help them transition, um, you know, into part of their digital transformation. And a lot of times that means moving uh, into and making better use of the Microsoft set of tools. Great. I've also asked uh, colleagues of mine from Yaylink to join. Uh, they have a product and series of solutions that I think you'll find compelling that can help during this transition that we're all going through. So Jonathan, maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, my name is Jonathan Sides, and I'm a senior director of strategic accounts at Yaylink. And again, we've been have a full portfolio of devices and solutions that we think can help get you through this process. Great. Well, uh, we also have another colleague from Yaylink, Bill. Hi, uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, name is Bill Newman. I'm a uh, Celine, uh, senior solutions architect here at Yaylink, supporting primarily uh, large enterprise applications. And unlike yourself, I'm proud of my clutter, so I enjoy showing it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. So why don't we jump right into it? Um, Kevin is, as he pointed out, he's an independent analyst and consultant has been following this for a while. So Kevin, let me just start with a question for you. What have you been seeing in the market pre-pandemic, you know, like in January and February, uh, which seems like a really long time ago? <laughs> what have you been seeing? Yeah, it seems like years ago. You know, I think that, um, you know, pre-COVID, um, certainly there were a lot of uh, organizations that were kicking the tires on teams. You know, they might have, um, you know, turned on teams and they were using it for the persistent chat and the, the, the chat kind of thing. Um, but they really were sometimes even involved in analysis paralysis. So whether they had a legacy PBX and they were thinking, you know, is Teams going to eventually become my one and only voice system? Or really, um, for organizations that were running Skype for business on premises, um, those people, you know, kind of had a working solution. And a lot of those larger enterprises we're very slowly looking at, you know, what the transition to Teams is um, because they saw it as a big change and they worried, you know, were their users going to be able to make this leap? So that's what they were thinking in January and February. Um, you know, obviously the, the story changes a little bit after then. Yeah, and Kevin, if I could just add a point there, I, I think for the last nine or 12 months, we've seen a transition between, like you said, some of the components that people have become familiar with. Uh, when they looked at Teams, a lot of the collaborative features were the first that were rolled out. And then obviously there's been a migration towards people that are adopting more of a hybrid strategy where they may start to add uh, voice in some cases and some of the other features as well. So it's definitely we're in a transitory state as far as where people are in their roadmap to move everything to teams. Well, Jonathan, I think you're absolutely right. We're, we certainly are in a, a time of transition. Um, and, and I think that that's the point of this, uh, this whole uh, webinar is that we're looking at transition in the next three to six and 12 months. Um, but going back to Kevin, um, COVID-19 happened 
And what are you seeing large enterprises, how are they reacting and adopting with these changes as, as we're evolving and trying to get you know back to normal, which we know won't happen for some time? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like I created this kind of react, adapt, adopt model. And, you know, initially, I think the reaction, you know, people had to go and, you know, work from home. And so what I think um, organizations thought was very difficult and was going to be a real problem for their users, you know, in January, February, and in normal times, they would have had a very you know, do pilots and, and, you know, do a very kind of slow onboarding or transition to teams, um, you know, really was forced upon organizations in a, in a week. Um, and many, many organizations therefore quickly reacted in this critical phase and moved to teams. Um, sometimes they, you know, we saw a huge increase in video because, you know, I'm going to talk you know, I'm sure I'll bring up analytics because that's that's key to know what's going on in your uh, in your environment. So people, for example, with Skype for Business, when everybody went home, you know, sometimes there was more pressure on the edge servers um, than they had planned for. You know, they'd never really planned 100% of the people remote. And so those organizations offloaded some of the workloads like meetings initially to teams. And very quickly, what we proved was that users will adapt to teams and they'll be able to figure it out. You know, uh, what is it? Necessity is the mother of all invention. So <laughs> when they had to, when you you have to do the meetings and we saw a huge, you know, spike in, in video and just general usage. Um, and so teams became for many organizations you know, the, the, the way that they dealt with, you know, both the distributed component and also just the huge spike in usage. Well, great, great points, Kevin. You know, you, you just look at how things have changed and, and clearly there's been a change in demand for hardware and kind of going back to your adapt, react uh, question. Uh, Bill, how have you seen this? What, what do you see in the marketplace now? Well, well, certainly we went through a, a mad scramble for what I call the enablement phase. And that is everybody made a mad dash for Best Buy to buy every headset and every webcam that, that, that existed in the country. And at the same time, uh, again, the IT personnel had to do uh, very similar things with respect to ramping up their infrastructure to support 100% remote workforce. And uh, Surprisingly enough, uh, American Enterprise uh, discovered that the remote worker can and is, uh, when properly equipped with the right tools, just as effective in the remote space as they are in the brick and mortar locations they're accustomed to. So now we're at the phase where American Enterprise has, has realized that they can remote locate many, many of their work, workers and perhaps be more selective about which workers they choose. Because again, physical location is no longer the driving factor or the only driving factor, right? We moved into, uh, as I said, a situation where we have lots and lots and lots of different brands. Uh, eventually, that's going to have to be rectified, right? And, and standardized, as, as we all know, because it has to be managed. And therein lies where, where Yealink has, has, has a very broad portfolio ranging all the way from USB devices up to the most complex room systems. And uh, we find ourselves now in a very good position enabling uh, the team's users with the, uh, the solutions at hand. Well, thanks, Bill. You, you know, you're absolutely right about that. And that is a, a, a big challenge, you know, the financial part of this. Uh, how do people look at their investments? What do they do? So, Kevin, you know, back to you thinking long term, what should enterprises be thinking about? What should they do long term for their organizations? Yeah, so so if we look at that, so we talked about React. I mean, in Adapt, um, you know, just what was said, I think people have recognized um, you know, as we now are working from home and being, being, you know, looking at increasing productivity, you know, audio quality matters. So noise cancellation on your headphones uh, matters. Uh, maybe for some executives that like to, to walk around while they talk, you know, things like 
um, team certified uh, speaker phones. And, and being team certified matters too, because that means the buttons work properly. And, you know, so now that, uh, you know, beyond the mad scramble to just get any headset, you know, there is a focus on, you know, what makes good audio. Similarly, you know, video devices are very different in terms of their capability. And so, you know, we're seeing organizations realize that, you know, maybe for some more of the senior people, maybe something, you know, some collab bar type solutions make make sense for those people. Or, or maybe even um, as we're looking to adapt to this remote distributed work, you know, maybe desk phones in the remote locations are what makes it easier for uh, individuals uh, as well. So I think, you know, certainly in the shorter term, and then we'll eventually talk about kind of the longer strategic term, but, you know, now we're really, you know, organizations are doing the adapt, they're polling their people. And, you know, often in, in the larger enterprises that I've worked with, you know, for sure a majority, and sometimes as high as 80% of the people are saying, look, I would choose to work remotely because I've proven both to myself and to the organization that I can be productive and people have found um, ways to manage. Not everybody. Some people it is, you know, still want to go back to the office, but there's, you know, up sometimes upwards of 80% of the people who want to choose and they have a better work-life balance working remotely. So now the financial investments um, it might be a lot smarter for organizations to invest in, in kind of the, the remote place as opposed to, you know, just uh, always thinking about investing in the office. Really good point. And in, in fact, you know, we know uh, Facebook is having people work from home. Uh, Twitter is going to have all their people working from home for a while. Uh, it is becoming the new norm. And and I think based on the new norm, Bill, what do you see as what Yalink and how they're going to respond to this? What suggestions do you have for the people listening into this uh, webinar? Well, I think uh, I think one of the key components to consider is the role of the individual remote worker. For example, I'm a customer facing individual. Uh, it makes sense for me to have a more sophisticated, more capable uh, video system at home to interact with teams. Uh, my wife, for example, works in an accounting department. Her webcam is just fine. But as, a, as, as we have more and more workers working from home, we have to take into account what image is the organization projecting to the outside world. Uh, webcams, we love them and they're great, but they have certain limitations, both from a video perspective and again as an audio perspective. So if I want to get in front of a customer, I want to make the best possible impression. This can be very easily accomplished when we start looking at the advanced Teams room features that are contained in our NBC series. And uh, to be able to have things like content cameras in the home, home, I'm going to stop calling it a home office and call it a home workspace. Because in reality, that's what it is. All right? uh, I can set up a, a document application and be able to do whiteboarding and be translucent all right? uh, and still carry out all of the very sophisticated, complex tasks and make all the important points that I wish to make and be, uh, you know, all humility aside, be impressive in my presentation in doing so. Yeah. And if I can just add a couple points there as far as far as Bill's concerned, I think the other part of it is is that we're trying to build a strategy of identifying bundles and solutions that may work together in a specific vertical, whether it be the financial industry or whether it be teleworking or telemedicine. Uh, and what we've done with some of our products is we have an a la carte ability with some of them where if you need an additional camera or you need to have a stronger microphone set up or things like that. And I think, Kevin, you're right about the collaboration bar. I mean, we've seen tremendous success already with bringing that into being used as either a personal device or in a collaboration room or a huddle room. 
So again, from our perspective, we're trying to adopt or adapt, which is the key words we're talking about here, to what specifically clients want to do. And one of the things that we've noticed is that some of the things that are being deployed now in the home office or the workspace, as Bill described it, is now the next step is the IT groups and the people that are managing the infrastructure back in the office, they're trying to replicate what's been rolled out at home in the last three months. So again, it's kind of, we're reversing the trend from that perspective. We hurried up in that sense, got everybody set up, and now we're basically trying to mirror that environment when people go back to work. And and I think that, Jonathan, to add to that, you know, as part of the longer term strategic adopt, um, because we're going to have many more hybrid meetings, it becomes really important for organizations, exactly what you said, whether it's a content camera in in a distributed remote workplace or in the office because you know before we would have get most of the people together in a meeting room in the office there'd always be a few people that were remote but they were always second class citizens you never really could see what was going on and you know the future of work with this more distributed workforce if you're in an office in a huddle room <laughs> you're much more likely to have many more remote participants and really organizations need to be thinking strategically, how do they equip those huddle rooms so that, you know, if half the people are in the office and half the people are remote, that everybody has a full experience and, and everybody can collaborate. So I think, you know, the, the, the team's meeting rooms with things like content camera and just good video, good audio, so that everybody can hear everybody, that becomes critically important for organizations looking to invest, you know, for the long term now. Really, really good point, Kevin and, and Jonathan. One of my observations is that from an industry standpoint, we had a lot of knee jerk reaction. Bill, you kind of pointed it out. Everybody went to Best Buy to buy product when things started <laughs> happening. And, and now they're getting back to a point where they're saying, all right, we know we're going to have people working from home. We also know that we've got to reorganize how we think do things at work, which is what you just said, Jonathan. So I guess the big question, this is a time when I think large enterprises as well as small, even SMB are going to be looking at what products do I need to deliver to my people to really take us to the next step, the, the, the new normal. Uh, is there anything Yealink has to offer to help these people out as what I'm sure they'll be doing is buying a lot of new product? Yeah, so what we've done, Jim, is we've put together a couple of special offers, which we considered, we, we call them the work from home program. So again, we've built together specific bundles that help people decide which one they really want to work with. So with, like I said earlier, if you want to get a UVC 30 for to have a better camera interface for your webinars, or you want to be able to add a collaboration bar, we have a couple of programs in place right now that allow you to get them at steeply discounted prices. Now, obviously we're not trying to take advantage of the fact that we're in this condition that we're in right now, but obviously what we're trying to do is make people be able to work and collaborate more effectively, whether they be in the home office like we are today or whether they ultimately end up back in the office. So again, we just, and again, as you know, uh, from the Microsoft perspective, they basically want to make sure that everybody's using the same uh, infrastructure, the same workspace and all of that, and have some use cases that can be deployed across the board so that we're building individual pieces for a specific unit within a company as well. And if I can mention one other thing, uh, phones sure. aren't necessarily going away, right? So for example, and I think Kevin mentioned this now, we know that it's not necessarily going to be that everybody's gonna run home and take their phone with them, but we did sell somewhere around 10,000 uh, power supplies over the past three or four months. So again, some workplaces and workspaces still need to rely on the old telephone or phone interface or the IP phone or whether and they would like to have a keypad that they can use in order to be able to call somebody right again so it's it obviously depends on an individual person's preference in terms of how they work you, you mentioned a discount what kind of discounts are you talking about 
Oh yeah, so thanks thanks for bringing that up. So for example, we're having a, the program right now allows you to buy a couple of the individual devices that are uh, that we showed in some of the slides in the presentation. And again, it's you can get up to 50% off MSRP right now today. Wow. If you if you go through a reseller channel that you already use today or you can go to the Microsoft marketplace right now and you can get a collaboration bar for 30% off. Wow, those are great prices. Well, you know, the objective, as I said at the very beginning, is that BC Strategies wants to provide information to help people make informed buying decisions. I want to thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I think you did what we needed to get done today is to explain the challenges we have in front of you and uh, or in front of all of us. And I, I also want to thank uh, Yaylink. I mean, your offer for these discounted prices uh, is dramatic. I, I think that it should do well. And, you know, in many respects, uh, you made a comment early on, Jonathan, about, you know, you don't want to take advantage of this situation. It seems to me like you're out there helping this situation. So I want to thank you. Thank you all for uh, today. And we will have associated with this video recording a lot of pieces of content that kind of support what we've been talking about today. So thank you all. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim.